Robert Erskine from Copper Fox and today I want to talk about uh, financial models and what type of models should actually be used by just about any business, uh, business owner, business manager and how, ben how, they, how these types of models benefit um, a business. Uh, there's probably four I want to talk about today. The first one is uh, a pricing model. Um, it can be as simple as um, identifying um, all the costs associated with uh, bringing, let's say, a product um, into your uh, business uh, ready to um, sell that on to customers. Um, that will include obviously the cost of the product, uh, the freight, any handling costs, any repackaging costs that are associated with that. Um, pretty important that this point in time when uh, inflation is uh, what it is um, and um, things like freight costs are so um, volatile at the moment that uh, you kind of want to keep an eye on what it is costing you to bring goods in if that's what you're doing as well as raw materials if you're making stuff um, from, from those. Uh, so uh, a, a pricing model that is relatively simple, it looks at all those um, input elements, um, the cost of the purchase, the freight, etc. Um, then uh, you've got a total cost, and then it's a, it's a case of what sort of margins um, are you expecting uh, from that uh, to determine what your sale price is to customers. Um, Obviously, if it's a price sensitive market that you're operating in, your margins are going to be probably no higher than 30% um, and could be as low as 10, uh, depending on the volumes that you're dealing, uh, dealing with at the time. Um, while if you're working in a niche market where price isn't uh, a major factor, uh, instead it's around availability of that product or service and the quality, uh, then you might be looking at uh, 50, 60, 70 percent plus type uh, margins. But this is a good way of keeping on top of um, what that pricing should be uh, to, uh, to, to maintain those, that, that, that level of margin. Another uh, model um, kind of related to that is looking at uh, historical data uh, associated with uh, different product lines, different service lines, um, going back in time, so extracting information out of uh, whatever finance system you have um, around uh, individual product or service performance. Um, most finance systems can also work out what the cost is associated with that particular product um, hopefully service as well, um, so um, it can spit out um, gross margins uh, associated with that over time. Um, a good way of looking at that is um, looking at, so putting that into a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet and, um, and, and creating a model around uh, product performance over time. Um, looking at the volume of sales, uh, units sold um, over, uh, like I say, over time, as well as the GP margin that that is generating over that same period. Um, particularly relevant for businesses that aren't always um, looking at their pricing and adjusting that based on their um, changing cost base. Uh, you can graphically see um, how that GP performance um, um, is, is, is working for the business or not, um, whether it's um, stable or whether it's deteriorating over time. Um, if you're certainly not uh, revising your pricing um, on a constant or regular basis, uh, then um, it's probably a case that your GP is deteriorating. Um, this will visually tell you this uh, by product um, and, um, and give you some uh, good information to be able to act on that. Um, whether you can pass on all of those costs to 
uh, your customer base. Um, there's a question of depending on what, what your circumstances are, what your relationship is, what the market conditions can dictate. Um, some can, some can't, but at least you've got that information to be able to act on. Uh, the third tool is uh, probably a, a, a simple uh, forecasting tool. Um, it's uh, for a profit and a loss. Uh, so in simple terms, it's literally looking at um, a financial year. For example, this current one, we're in July. If you've got a, a balance date of the 31st of March, then we're, we're already three months through the year. Um, but we've got nine months to go. Um, now, if you've got a month-on-month -month or a 12-month month P&L, uh, you would establish it with um, three months actual. Um, April, May, June, and hopefully you've got budgets uh, for the year and you would look at um, your budget for July through to March next year um, and what does that look like. Uh, the benefit of having that type of forecasting tool, and it doesn't have to be complicated, but it can be actually quite simple, um, is that it, uh, you can look at what's happened in the first three months if you're looking at fairly consistent um, operating activity month on month across the year, then uh, you can instantly see whether or not you're on track in those first three months and that um, it's business as usual for the next nine months or whether you're over or underperforming against um, what you're anticipating the position of the business uh, to be. Um, that gives you uh, sufficient information to then act on um, and make decisions about how to either correct um, uh, an, a sort of an underperforming situation or how to um, continue focusing on what you're doing right um, so that uh, the rest of the year remains ahead of your targets. Um, like I say, you can add in sensitivities around that uh, and some complexity around that in terms of what happens if um, revenue uh, declines by 10%. Um, what does that look like from an overall profitability position? Um, likewise, what happens if certain costs uh, go up by 5 10%, whatever the percentage is that you want to um, gauge? Um, how does that impact profitability? Um, that allows you to think about, okay, I've got to produce more, I've got to sell more, or I've got to put my prices up. At least it gives you some options in terms of what sort of decisions you have to make going forward to correct that position and, um, and allow you to hit the targets that you've set uh, at the start of the year. Complementing that, and probably the most important tool, uh, especially at times like this when um, business activity is plateauing, in some cases uh, your, your revenue targets are declining, um, is cash flow and a cash flow forecast. Um, this is a really good uh, management tool for, uh, for business owners to use. Uh, it gives them an early warning signal as to whether or not there are going to be some cash flow problems um, in, in the future. Uh, again, you'd look at it from a um, what, look at the financial year. We've had three uh, three months of act, act, actual activity. What does that look like? What's the what's the the, the cash um, situation across that period? And based on what you anticipate activity to be across the next nine months. Um, how does that impact your cash, cash position? So it does look at that operating um, activity uh, that you've got in your operating forecasting model, uh, as well as um, any additional capital activity. And capital activity could be um, the purchase or sale of fixed assets or other assets. Um, it could be uh, any new debt that you're introducing into the business. It could be existing debt that you're paying off um, over that time, uh, as well as 
uh, your GST, PAYE, uh, provisional tax um, type activity. Um, that gives you uh, a fairly uh, comprehensive, uh, albeit at a high, highish level, um, view of um, what your commitments are, what your um, income and cash looks like, and therefore um, whether you've got uh, a strong position or a weak position in terms of your overall cash, um, cash flow position. Um, that allows you to then have possibly conversations with uh, your bank about um, you know, um, covering off um, short-term uh, deficiencies in your cash flow if that's what happens. Um, or speaking to shareholders about putting in um, extra e equity over a, a short-term period if that's what's happening. Um, um, also, if you're looking at uh, future planned capital uh, investment in terms of uh, buying plant equipment or whatever, um, can the business um, cope with that? Um, and um, is it a case of uh, it can uh, it, it can fund that out of its existing cash flow, or do you need to bring in new debt or new equity? So. It just allows the business to have a little bit of um, transparency as to what you think is going to happen in the future, uh, based on what you know now. Um, it's certainly a, a model, and both the uh, P&L model and the cash flow model are, uh, are models that should be updated monthly, uh, so that you've got as up-to-date information as possible about both what's happening now um, and in the recent um, past, as well as what you think is going to happen in the future. Again, it doesn't have to be an overly complicated um, financial model. Uh, it can be relatively simple, um, but you can also add in uh, some complexity around sensitivities. What if, again, um, you know, your revenue drops? What if um, you don't collect um, cash from your customers as quick as you um, would otherwise um, collect it. Um, what happens if prices do go up? The, the cost of services, the, the cost of supplies goes up. What is, what is the impact um, on your cash flow? Um, so there's a number of ways that you can look at it and, and use that tool. Um, but it's a, a, a very powerful tool, um, and like I say, it's a, it's a great early warning um, mechanism for managers um, that um, allows them to either make decisions about proceeding with stuff or not, as the case may be. Sure, there are a lot of other um, financial models there that uh, businesses can use, special purpose uh, type models. For example, if you're looking at um, acquiring uh, a new business, well then part of your business plan will be a financial model around um, what it costs to acquire that business, how that will be funded, uh, the cost of servicing that funding, whatever that may be, whether it's debt or equity, um, and then how that business, how you anticipate that business to perform as part of your um, existing business um, and um, how does that overall position look? Um, again, adding sensitivities in there, what if um, there's a dip before it actually um, provides any um, gains? Um, what's the cash flow impact of uh, that extra investment? Um, there might be other costs that are associated with integrating it into your business. You know, all that can be uh, can be um, modelled and a financial model, and should be, so that you're um, able then to make a very educated decision on whether to proceed or not. So I hope that helps in terms of an indication of the types of tools that are um, easily created uh, and should be used.